Hey guys, uh, sorry, I'm fixing a little dinner. Um, running around, trying to get stuff done. Uh, busy, busy, busy. So I want to talk tonight about uh, Mazda. Should Mazda bringing back a pickup. I've been driving the uh, uh, 2019 Mazda CX-9. Fantastic. So yeah, um, I'll chat about that. She's going to get on here pretty soon. And I got Close my little thing about abide community. Welcome to live chat. Remember to guard your privacy and abide by your community ready guidelines. I oh, shut up. How do you close that damn thing? I don't know. Go away. All right. So, um, everybody's building midsize or low compact pickups. Hyundai, Kia, Ford. Ford's talking about doing a courier, smaller size. I'm thinking it's about damn time Mazda builds a low compact pickup again. Why not? Argue with me. Fight me. What was that thing you put on Facebook? You're like, you're like, such and such is best. Fight me. Ah. All right. Jenny five. Jenny five. Jenny five. Jenny five. What's up, bro? Um, just getting going. I've noticed these live stream take out about 30 minutes. I think I should just sit here for like 30 minutes, wait for the take off. Should be the plan. Bromden. Bromden is here. Talk about rear AC events. We're saying the same hat. Twinsies. Twinsies. Okay. I was watching BCG construction earlier. How the hell do those guys do all these videos about shopping at Lowe's and Home Depot? I was trying to figure this out. Like, should I drive around dealerships, do live streams at dealerships? No. <laughs> no, I should not. <laughs> Are you still watching BCG? <laughs> Those guys, it's like Seinfeld to me. That's what, oh, I got a burn. Oh, yeah, that's my burn mark. I was welding the other day, and I got a piece of the welding. Um, um, hot hot, uh, hot piece of the welding caught in my glove. Yeah, not good. I hit my shirt on fire, too. That's kind of fun. Um, hey, Doug. Yes, Mazda should build a mini pickup again. I think so. Are we else doing it? What the hell? Sean's pouring a white whiskey for your stream now. <laughs> nice. I, I want to talk about the whiskey here. Um, let's pour you guys in here. You guys, regulars. I, w I want to give a plug out to the whiskey producer. And I'm going to give a plug. And I really need to be sponsored by these guys. The plug. It's kind of empty. I enjoyed it. Um, this is uh, Soldier Valley. Soldier Valley. It's uh, Patriarch Whiskey. What's cool about this is that it is distilled, it's bottled by Patriarch Distillers in La Vista, Nebraska. Yeah, it's a, it's just, it's bottled in Nebraska. I don't think it's created in Nebraska, but it's bottled in Nebraska. And as part of Patriarch Whiskey, uh, um, they contribute a portion of the proceeds of every bottle to a nonprofit veterans organization. And look, I got a dog tag on it that says, uh, what's it say in there? Soldier Volley, count, uh, got your six. I got, it's a flask like you would see, like in a, it, like the bottle um, that you would see, like military guys said, a canteen. A canteen, that's what it is, a canteen. Um, but yeah, La Vista, Nebraska. Mm, turns out, yeah. So I should, you guys should email these guys, tell them I should uh, get some. Free whiskey from these guys, because it's pretty cool. Uh, proceeds nonprofit veterans group. You got bottled in Nebraska, and you got the dog tag and the canteen type bottle, and it's cheaper than Crown. I know. So um, it's pretty pretty handy. It's got a six there, and it says "Got your six on it. So if you guys see this, the bourbon is ridiculously expensive. It's like forty five bucks. Uh, the whiskey is twenty one. So. And I'm not a connoisseur enough to tell you the difference. I really don't care. Um, so, yeah, so there you go. There, there's my plug. Back to the uh, regularly uh, scheduled uh, uh, comments here. Mm, live stream dealerships. I know. I don't really care. I could do an auto show. Maybe I should do it in Detroit. Did you guys see? You guys probably didn't see the, the schedule for the Detroit auto show. Uh, it was. Oh, it's bad. Uh, they Basically, Monday. One day. It's supposed to be two days. Monday, Tuesday. I went for three or four years in a row, and Tuesday was all day. 
and you were just zonked by Tuesday afternoon. This year, it's just Monday. They have 12 press conferences is what Auto News counted up. And that's a few off-sites and 12, that's it. LA had 15. I think New York had like 17 or something. I mean, it is just crazy. That show's dying. The last winter show of the Detroit Auto Show. They're moving to October, I think it was, um, in 2020. This is it. It's all she wrote. But I'm there because Ford and Ram are both doing their reveals under heavy duty. Now, there's a story on 2020 Ram pickups, what to expect on pickuptrucktalk.com. I had a headache today. So I didn't do a video on it, but I'll do a video tomorrow about what to expect in a Ram uh, heavy duty 2020. Basically, Ram's already like showing off their pickup. I mean, it's kind of old news, but it's. I think it's still important to get the news out there. I still think it's important to get the news out there. So I'm, you'll see that tomorrow if I don't have a headache. Um, I'm solving my headache right now. Uh, Jenny Five says it was a good, reliable commuter vehicle with a semi decent payload. I mean, the whole market is going pickups. Where the hell is the Mazda pickup? Did you know, fun fact, my first story for Truck Trend ever was on a rotary mo Mazda pickup? Fun fact. Uh, Brandon says, hey, Doug. Hey, uh, Sean says, that's just wrong. Whiskey from the West, weird. <laughs> cost. Oh, hey, hey, I'm not. Okay, fine. I'm a little weird. But uh, I don't know. I don't know where they get it from. But it says distilled or bottled. I need to go find these guys. La Vista, I think, is like six, seven hours away. I used to go. They have a. They have what I was reading online. They have a bar attached. You can taste their whiskeys at the bar. I should do that. Road trip. Road trip. Road trip. Uh, that's that. Uh, Tim, since when is Ford putting a V10 in a 2020 Super Duty? Uh, there was that uh, thing that I showed. It was a the 7.3 liter. Is it a V8 or V10? There was I don't know. May I may have screwed that up. Anyways. Um, it was on TFL. TFL's got it. They did a screenshot of it. All right. Hey, Brandon. Uh, GM is revealing the HD there too, right? Nope. Disappointed about a new RAM HD. It has the same cab as the old one. Yeah, I thought about that too. And I, I'm doing a video on that. And uh, I I don't know. I'm not that disappointed. That the same cab, but the interior is all different. So what the hell? They didn't make it three inches bigger? That mega cab was already pretty damn mega. So I'm not that concerned about it. I'm going to miss it in January. You really? Really, Elliot, you're going to miss the auto show in January? <sighs> the snow and cold air was a part of the experience going, yeah, yeah. I froze my gonads off at 5 o'clock in the morning and walking to Detroit River to get the Kobo. I'm good. I'm fine. I lived in, I lived in Michigan for 15 years, something like that. And No, not 15 years. Uh, yeah, it was a long time. Anyways, I lived in there for a long time, and... Uh, I'm done with that. It was a 7.3 V8. I said, you said V10. I say stupid stuff in my videos all the time, Brandon. I'm sorry. It was a V8, not V10. <sighs> Next, you'd be like, you're trying to be rear seat VAC vents in the back, and then there's not. Yeah, all right, whatever. Mm. Yeah, no, no journalist I know is going to miss it in January. Sorry. That show the, the problem with that show is that there's no on-site driving events because it's so cold. You can't do EV driving. You can't do outdoor driving. There's no uh, experiences outside the show. It's very much indoors, locked down with the that's, people mover running on top of Kobo. You can't hear yourself talk. It's just crazy. Don't make inaccurate statements about rear AC events. <laughs> I won't. Tim, how did you like my kid's Christmas present? Um, uh, it was cool. Uh, did you send me something? <laughs> I don't know. I don't really, I, I don't know. Jenny five. I thought of you today. I was looking up the Ram information and, uh, yeah. So there's a, the, the Cummins turbo diesels in line six. I can do that. I don't mean to do that. I'm saying by you. The motorcycle on Instagram, model. you like the picture. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Fine, 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 fine. I know what you're talking about now. Yes, you had your, all your kids lined up for the photo. 
Very cute. That's from real kids. Let me know how it works out. Kids that require diaper changes, not oil changes. Thank you very much. Hmm. I can't see Mazda bringing the truck back. It was a Ranger the last time. They are too involved with cars and SUVs, SUVs. They are, but I don't know. If you ask any, here's the thing with Sean. If you ask any journalist what their favorite car is and SUV, or whatever, on that list of like top five is going to be a Mazda product. They drive so well. We all love them because they drive well. The Mazda CX-9 I'm driving, freaking love it. It's awesome. And that's in normal mode. I haven't put it in sport mode. Sport mode is like <laughs> in a three-row SUV. It's crazy. So I think we people all love that about that. And all journalists love that. And so I think if they could do that, it'd be great. Because so I was reading some of the Ford Ranger stuff today. And Ford is saying that their Rangers, it, they decided that Looking at the market and understanding the market customers, that the customers for that Ranger are going to be uh, adventure ready. And that same thing with Jeep Gladiator. They're adventure ready people. What? <laughs> I owned an S10. I've owned just mid sized pickups. Adventure ready? No, I like the smaller size. It fits in my garage. <laughs> I can park it at Walmart, no problem. I don't, I don't understand this whole thing about. Adventure ready. And so that's why they made the Ranger is all focused on adventure ready. If you saw, uh, there's a press um, event that I did not get invited to, did not slap in the face, just I didn't get invited to. It happens in my business, um, oversight, or I wasn't popular enough. Uh, it was in San Diego. The Ford Ranger was out testing. And the, the the photos I've seen from this, the videos I've seen from this, have literally had been one pass through a thing of water. And this whole thing of water in the air and mud. So these rangers got covered with mud. And then they drove along the beach in San Diego, and that was it. That was the entire event. From what I can tell, that's the photos of the entire event. I, I'm not buying it. I'm just not buying it. I mean, adventure ready, you can go through a pile of water and get mud on it. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not... Uh, I, I, I don't know. That's not the adventure to me. The adventure is going getting lost somewhere, going camping a couple of days, or going rock crawling a little bit. Like, if you notice the ZR2 Bison video, which nobody watched on this channel, watch it now. Um, we did rock crawling. Why didn't the Ranger do rock crawling? Where's the video of that? I don't know. Maybe I didn't see it. Maybe I didn't see it, but I, I, I watched a little bit of video here and there, and I've looked at photos, Instagram like crazy. And uh, I don't know. I'm plum confused. Okay, I, uh, I've seen some, yeah, I've, I haven't seen the full reviews yet, but I've seen a little bit of snippets. I need to watch more of the full reviews, but I, I don't. So I do what I don't. Sometimes I like watching the people's reviews and sometimes I don't want, like watching their reviews. Sometimes I like to like just get my own, uh, I like to get in and drive it for a while and then I like to go look at reviews after I've driven it for a little bit. Because I feel like sometimes if you read too many reviews and you get into it, all you're doing is going, aha, 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 and you're not going, I just want to experience it, and then I'll read reviews afterwards. Hello, I told you it was inline six. I know. If that's the argument, the Sherry Auto Show would move it somewhere as well. No, Elliot. No, 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 no. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Time out. Here is why Chicago works. For journalists. Not for the public, but for journalists. Actually, for the public, too. Um, they have the largest square footage inside the McCormick Center, and they can do Jeep drives. They do uh, little driving events in the center itself, A, so they have room for it, and B, it's awesome as a journalist, right? So McCormick is next door to a hotel, and the hotel is connected by a, um, oh, it's a breezeway, basically. It's a breezeway is connected those two together, and they built them jointly. And so every year, Nissan or Toyota sponsored me to go. Uh, last couple of years, Nissan sponsored me to go. And you stay at the hotel. So you go down the escal elevator. You walk across this little breezeway, and you walk into the show. It's fantastic. It's awesome. That's why Kobo doesn't work. Because Kobo has no hotel that is a breezeway connected. You have to go outside to get to Kobo. Journalists don't like that. We're, we're pampered people. We really are. 
So that's why I like McCormick. I, you know, Chicago can move. I don't really don't care. The the question is going to be, and we've had a discussion about this on uh, Facebook groups as well, is how, how does the product cycle change? timing change of automakers because the automakers get vehicles prepped for the show. They do it year after year. They, you know, new vehicles. So if you move the show to October, do they then prep the vehicles in the summer to launch? Does it change the timing? So would the next generation Ram pickup get an extra six months in development because you got to wait for the show to start? Probably. It very much would happen. And so then if new cars go on sale in the fall, so typically auto show, you show them in January, press drives in March, April, May, dealer drives in May, uh, factory gets retooled, goes on sale August, September. So if you do it in October, does that mean the new car goes on market in March? It's right around tax season, so that sometimes makes some sense, but in the most part of the country, it's winter time. So that doesn't really work out well either, right? So... How does that change stuff? That's what journalists want to know. That's what we talk about all the time. How does that change the product development of when vehicles come out? Are we going to start seeing 2020 models uh, in like April? Is that the, is that, and do they call them 2019 models instead? Are we going to skip this whole like half year model year change stuff? Does that, re I mean, how does this all work out? That's, that's going to be interesting to watch because Detroit has always been such a big player in the marketplace. Uh, two boys, two boy and a dot. Okay, fine. You have three kids. I'm surprised you have three motorcycle too. Oh, that's impressive. Ranger's not even close to Scapel as Gladiator. I, I would agree. I'm angling for the Gladiator drive, guys. I want to go on that one. Going after Tacoma with an adventure. Yeah, I could see that. The Cummins has always been, the Cummins in the Dodge Ram has always been an inline six. The inline six makes more torque more efficiently than V8, pound for pound. I feel like Johnny Five's like talking about like a fighter. Pound for pound, in this corner is the inline six. And the other corner is the V8. Uh, um, I think Honda sells more CRVs than Mazda sells cars. So they're not going to offer a vehicle that won't sell in high numbers. But they are a small manufacturer. Every sale matters. And would customers come to their dealerships more if they saw pickups along with their SUVs? I don't know. <laughs> the Ranger can't rock crawl. There's no video of it. Not a rock crawling crawler myself. I don't, you know, it's like, I don't think it needs to be boulder rock crawling, but I think it needs to be like um, dirt and rock and kind of dirt road kind of stuff. I don't know. Uh, yo, lucky, lucky, <laughs> lucky, blankety, blank. Uh, hey, Randy. The turn off shows we moved to June 2020. Is it June or October? They were talking October for a while. I don't know. The guy who used to run that actually left. Um, well, it's called the B2, BT50. It's not coming here, right? Like, no. Um, I think the, the BT50... Is, do they still make one worldwide? That's a good question. Mazda BT50. The worldwide pickup. Oh, yeah. yeah, That's right. They do make a, they make a pickup worldwide. Yep. Yep. So the Mazda BT-50 is a compact mid-sized pickup truck produced by the Japanese manufacturer Mazda since 2006. It's a larger version of a predecessor B-series pickup and it's not sold in Japan and North American markets. Yeah. I I was on, I, I thought that they did something. Most manufacturers do offer a pickup in uh, global marketplaces. They're built in Thailand and distributed in several markets. Did you know that Thailand is the world's largest mid-sized pickup market? For the record, like Tim, I work in Chicago. Unlike Tim, I do my own travel. <laughs> You're unlucky. Uh, for the re I stay at either Loop or Red North, take CTR Metro and pound my feet into the oblivion. Yeah, I don't know why you do that. Is June? Is it June? All right, it's June. So it's better. June's good in Michigan. I used to like June in Michigan. I get the experience Detroit in June down at the Civic Center there across from Kobo. I think that's a perfect plan. But again, does that change stuff? So if is the June, if they launch it in June, is it going to be in deal of lots in like two months, uh, July, August, uh, three months, two, three months? Are we going to see it more production ready? Are we going to see all the numbers out, all the EPA testing out? Are we going to keep the same development cycle? It's going to be interesting. 
They do use a hell of a mid-sized pickup in Thailand. They do. There you, where you look. Um, I was in Mexico about 10 years ago watching uh, guys climb into a crew cab uh, Hilux. And, boy, they use a hell of a that thing. They use a hell of a lot of that thing. Well, smaller trucks do good in rice patties, I guess. <laughs> I think the Ranger FX4 might be as capable as the Tacoma TRD Pro. Hmm. I don't know. I will get a chance to drive one, and I will uh, take it and uh, see what see what it's going to be. I'm curious about it. I've seen it at shows. I've never really hopped inside of the Ranger. Uh, maybe I will in Detroit because I'll be bored. And maybe I'll do a live stream from it. Maybe I'll talk about the rear seat AB vents in the Ranger or lack thereof. I think it's lack thereof. Mm -hmm. And in every condition from the holiday driving that too wild, that's a brand new pickup with a ton of aftermarket parts. <laughs> You got to love you got you got to love Thailand. You got to love people in other markets do with their pickups. It's crazy what they do with these things. Uh, it's it's it's. So I have a friend in Germany who sends me photos of what people do with their cars in Germany. So the Golf, the VW Golf, is essentially a small compact truck for some people in Germany. They put tow hitches on it and they tow all sorts of stuff with this little mini Golf. I'm like, that would never fly in the U.S. That would never fly. Nobody would ever do that stuff, right? We'd all have our monster three-quarter ton, one-ton trucks towing some minuscule little trailer. Nope, not in Germany. They tow all sorts of stuff in a small little car. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. It makes the argument that says we over-tow. We have vehicles that are way too large for our needs. And that sends it home when you watch see those photos he sends me. Um, Mid-sized trucks are huge in Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, Argentina, Brazil, name a few. Um, yes, the mid-sized diesels are nice. Range needs diesel. Yeah. Good luck with that. I don't. I'm not convinced Ford wants to even play in the marketplace. I read an auto news story today about Ford playing the marketplace and the mid-sized marketplace, and I thought it was a load of crap. <laughs> it was a good article he wrote. I, he he. Everything they told him, he wrote really well, and he put in a good story. But I think it's a load of crap. I think I think Ford screwed up, and they didn't realize they screwed up until the market exploded, and they were like, "Time to get something in the marketplace." And they came up with this Ranger that has, was it two cat two cab configurations? A, is it a extended cab, crew cab, something like that? There those, and three trim levels and one engine. They really just screwed that up. Do you think mid-sized trucks in Thailand are probably because full-size trucks are just too big for roads? I think probably that. And I also think the fact that the fuel prices um, in Thailand and I think that the availability, there you can't get full-size pick, pickups in Thailand. I th What's interesting to watch is Australia. So Australia is starting to import full-size trucks. Because in the outback, it makes sense, right? The big areas of room, just like uh, America has. And uh, so you're seeing a lot of full-size trucks getting into Australia. Uh, they want to tow their big uh, fifth-wheel campers out for a long weekend. And you need a full-size truck to be able to do that. So uh, Ram starting to import over there. And I want to say somebody else is doing it. I don't think Ford's doing it. Maybe Chevy? Chevy does some interesting stuff. What blows me away is uh, Chevy does a lot of stuff in Dubai and in Arab countries. So uh, Iraq, Saudi Arabia, Chevy does a lot with Silverado and with uh, Tahoe, I think, they over there. And they do a lot with that marketplace. It's really interesting. Every once in a while, I get a press release from over there. And I'm just like, what? And yeah, they, they sell trucks over there. It's one of the... Few places in the world outside of North America that they sell a full size truck. You know, I mean, you would think that gas would be cheap over there, right? And you would think that they have the money to buy those kind of trucks over there. But it's interesting. Chevy's been over in, uh, I think, in Arab countries for like 25, 30 years, something like that. And they sell a lot of Silverados over there. Very interesting. All right. Uh, if you get a chance, check out the Hilux, Hilux, Hilux diesel performance. 
I, I've, I've, there's a video on this channel of a Land Cruiser with a diesel, cat diesel. It's kind of fun. Um, I would love to drive a Hilux or Helix, whatever the hell you call it. And uh, I'm going to try to, an upcoming trip, I'm going to try to drive that vehicle. It's one of my, on my list of things to drive. Brandon, the Dura Torque sold elsewhere is a beast. One powers the Ranger Raptor that has the big Aussie Ute of the minute. Yeah. I wish Toyota would bring the diesel here. I think it would do great. Never going to happen. Anyone see my dead horse beating stick? Because I'm about to say it. <laughs> diesel Tundra. <laughs> Chevrolet be Holden special vehicles. Yeah. Holden's interesting. I, I keep reading news from Australia with a Holden. Uh, it seems like it went under. Iraq has a ton of three-quarter one-ton Chevys. Yeah, it's a very interesting uh, piece of the market there. I can't figure out. I don't think they report their sales numbers as part of their official sales results, which, by the way, tick, 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 tick. Oh, I got another. Oh, that's the same one. No, I got two. This was the ladder of the weekend. I caught my ladder in my hand as I was going down, and oh, that hurt. I hung a bunch of Christmas lights, like a bunch. Three hours on the roof. I'm not happy with that. Um, where's it going with that? Oh, I don't know if Chevy releases their Silverado numbers as part of their overall sales. But yeah, Iraq, uh, Saudi Arabia, it's big over there. It's really interesting. Uh, and the same thing in Germany. So uh, Germany, th this is really interesting. The Guinness Book of World Records for the long longest truck um, parade ever in history is in Germany. A bunch of these Ram owners lined up and did a driving event and they set the Guinness Book of World Records for as many Ram pickups in line um, on the Autobahn. Yeah, yeah. Blow you away, right? I was doing a story on that and I never could find a guy in, in Germany to talk to him about his Ram pickup. But there is a video um, a friend, the, my Germany friend, uh, sent me a video. There's this guy in Germany with a cowboy hat. Uh, he's got the cowboy hat. He's got the horse. He's got the uh, chaps. He's got the uh, spurs, and he's doing a ram pickup review on a farm in Ger or a ranch in Germany with horses. It's out there. <laughs> that's in the that's in the dark web of of YouTube. Look for that dark web of YouTube. Uh, government, let's, let's just use the Chevys. They're cheaper, more reliable options. The trucks available to them, which if you look into it are all midsize. LOL. Um, I, yeah. Well, I think the government's going to go hydrogen pretty soon. The uh, hydrogen ZH2 that uh, Colorado has out, the Chevy Colorado ZH2. Um, I'm hearing good things. I'm hearing. I was talking to the, the Chevy engineers when we were doing the bison launch, and uh, they've been hearing a lot of good stuff from the government. The military is using that hydrogen pretty well, and it's working for them. So there you go. I don't know. I um, I'm on the fence on that one. Um, I I think it works for the military, and I think again, military commercial applications could drive the marketplace the infrastructure for building hydrogen. It's just it's just gonna be interesting to watch and. The shift right now for Chevy is so interesting. And GM. So Mark Royce, who's a really smart guy, has been uh, making some changes. He's part of the, the global product group for GM, which is a big, wide-ranging term for everything new coming in the marketplace. And his goal right now is to expand the company's approach to EV and autonomous e vehicles, as well as serving the, serving the marketplace for Chevy and GMC pickups and SUVs. Now these two ideas could be nowhere close on the spectrum of automotive companies. And most people have multiple VPs running these two two different company programs, I should say. And Chevy is putting them together under Mark Royce. And what's interesting to me is if you look back in the past decade, since the bankruptcy, and now with the new Silverado, it's I don't know if if it makes sense, right? Is this new Silverado a flop? It's going to be a really interesting question to ask here in January. It's going to be very interesting to ask if the new Silverado is a flop. I, you look at the reviews, the reviews all say yes, but what are the sales going to be? I don't know. 
Maybe you heard this before, but the preferred truck among militias, rebels, and other militaristic groups worldwide is total Hilux. Um, you know what what's interesting about that, Randy, is I had somebody reach out to me on that, and I uh I was looking into that a little bit more, and it turns out the reason why they use them all the time is in the Horn of Africa and along the coast of Africa towards the Middle East, you can literally buy parts for your truck all along those areas. There's a huge assortment of replacement parts for Toyota, Toyota Tacoma and Hilux in the whole place of Saudi Arabia. And so he was telling me that's why they buy them all the time because you can get all sorts of parts. You can see that. Um, plus when the government, US government buys them and it gives them to the Iraqis, Afghans, plus the market, I mean, think about it. Would you turn down a free three quarter ton crew cab, long bed Chevy 2,500? I would, cause I can't park the damn thing. <laughs> it tore up my yard too. I still got to level up the yard. Uh, Toyota investigated for that. I think, yeah, they were. Toyota was. They did, and their tier teams got serious trouble for it. Uh, their chief engineer, Mike Spears, was pissed about it too. That was funny. Jack Daniels for life. Hey, Dan. Dan, who's Dan blew up my phone today by liking my Instagram post. All of a sudden, I got this all this Dan sold them. Dan demand, Dan demand, Dan demand, Dan demand. Dan demand. Um, heard about hydrogen for a long time. I need to get on with it. A lot of taxpayer money has gone into that program. They're, they're still setting it too. Um, I don't know. I'm optimistic they're going to come out with it. I'm optimistic Toyota's going to be it, make a big announcement in the next five years on it. But it's all optimism at the moment. Cruz, Dan, I heard that they use them more. They actually boots in the ground. They're more. There are more Chevys. Mm. I don't know about the military and boots in the ground. Um, parking anywhere in the desert. Brandon DCG. Brandon, I'll make you my first wrench. <laughs> I'm extremely interested in the hydrogen vehicle. I, you know, so I had this thought, and it's a bizarre thought I have. So remember the Chevy Oda Priok is on this channel, the, the, the electric Prius thing. I want to know, has anybody crashed a Mirai? Can you buy a Mirai at a junkyard crashed and then put your own truck on it? That's what I want to know. I want to know, has anybody thought about that? Are there enough? I don't know if Mariah's been out long enough, but maybe somebody may have got it and had an accident with it, and now it's, a, now it's at a uh, junkyard. Wouldn't that be fun? Wouldn't it be interesting to take an old Chevy or old Toyota or something like that and take a Mariah powertrain and put it into it? I think so. I think it'd be something I would do. <laughs> you can do anything if you have the money out of it, right? There is never anything left. <laughs> Maybe there's not. Maybe the body's gone, but that's the key. The body's gone, but the powertrain is there. Right? I think so. Oh, I'm wondering if Johnny Five's correct. That's always a questionable thing. Oh, I mean, Johnny Five is always correct. Always correct. Can we talk about the channel for a little bit, you guys? Um, have you guys noticed that the channel's exploded? <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> uh, I added like 100 and some subscribers on the weekend. Wow. Is that damn uh, Chevy, that those heavy-duty heavy photos. And then I got picked up on Motor One, just <clears throat> It's crazy. Um, so, yeah, I will. So, here's the thing. I have an announcement to make. I have an announcement to make. Announcement is, is that due to the recent success of the heavy duty videos on this channel, Chevy and Ford, basically Chevy, TMC a little bit, I decided, I decided to go to Detroit Auto Show this year. My credentials came through. I have a friend. I'm gonna stay with his house, and I'm gonna drive to Chicago in, in Detroit. So my plan is to literally live stream from Kobo. The morning of Monday, January 13th, I think it is, or 14th, one or two. Anyways, it's uh, when, after the Ford and Ram press conference, I'm going to go to each booth, and I'm going to live stream from the booth with the new heavy-duty trucks. There you go. That's what I'm doing. So, yeah, I'm going to go to Detroit this year, first time I've been there in several years. And uh, because of the success of the, of the videos and subscribers, people wanting to know more about it, I will be there in person. 
uh, doing the live streams. Uh, I'm not correct. Don't you put that evil on me. <laughs> Dan Sullivan, sharing this on the channel. Yeah, you guys have been awesome, man. This Twitter and Instagram, I'm blown out. 1600, damn near. Yeah, I was, uh, should have been right on there, but I had to, I lost subscribers. There you go. Did you lose any subscribers on YouTube to lead the fake accounts this last week? Yeah, I think I lost like 10. It wasn't very much. Uh, my damn, my father in law says either time or money, people very rarely have both at the same time. <laughs> That's a very true statement. Damn it, I'll move in this, I'll be moving severs that day. Servers. I'm going to go servers. Teddy, that is definitely me. Yeah, I, I decided to go to that show. I'm on the list to go to Houston. I'm waiting for my airfare to go to Japan. I've had the confirmation I will be going. I'm going to be sad. I'm going to miss the GMC Sierra Heavy Duty unveiling in San Diego that week if I'm in Japan. Um, I'm on the list. I actually got my credentials, everything straightened out to go to Chicago. And I'll probably be at the Chevy Heavy Duty drivers, uh, Heavy Duty launch as well. So uh, some announcements there. Uh, I think it's all going to work out. I will be in Tokyo for a couple days, which I'm very much hoping to check out. Uh, I don't know if they have them there. I want to see a. I want to go to a dealership in to in Tokyo. <laughs> I want to. I you if you want to see a live stream. I don't know what the time delay is. So what time is it in Japan right now? Oh, what time is Tokyo? What time is, is it in Tokyo right now? It's 10.38 a.m. So I could do this. I could literally do this. What do you think about going... I'll give you a little closer. What do you think about when I'm in Tokyo? I'm going to destroy my data. But what do you think about like live streaming from a dealership in Tokyo? Walking around. I won't... They can ask me questions like... If I want to test drive anything, but I don't know how to answer them because I don't know Japanese, right? So I don't have a clue <laughs> what they're talking about. But I think that'd be awesome, right? Like, I don't need an hour. I just need like 25, 30 minutes. Just walk around, open doors, kind of check stuff out. Um, I, should, oh, use Google, I can't use Google Translate. Am I using my phone to live stream? Johnny Five? Come on. Uh, they're doing debuts at the San Diego Auto Show? No. Offsite. They're doing an offsite re offsite unveil um, in San Diego. Look up Tokyo Drew while you're there. I don't Tokyo Drew. Tokyo Tokyo Drew. Oh yeah, he's got a channel. Hmm. Yeah, I have to look him up. I don't know. Hmm. <laughs> Randy gets all right, Randy. That's our secret. You can't be posting a lot of stuff about that, Randy. I haven't made it the Facebook official, but uh, yeah, that's that's it. right now. Not gonna wood fingers crossed. Everything looks like it's good for that. So yeah, I'm gonna spend a couple days in Tokyo. Maybe meeting with my Nissan friends as well, and see what I can do. But um, yeah, I'm gonna see if I can't. Uh, I think it'd be really awesome to like live stream from a dealership in Tokyo. Yeah, I I don't know. He's part of the crew, YREU crew and VCG gang. Yeah, I'll have to uh, check him out. We'll get the same effect live or not. I don't know. I think live is fun. Because live you can be like, hey, what's uh, what's going on over here? We can go walk over. What's with the off-site stuff? So uh, I thought I talked about this last time, Elliot. So GMC and Chevy are doing both off-site events. They get, they get more control of the media news cycle at that time. And they get out of the auto show. They can, instead of spending all the money to rent the hall and do the big uh, unveiling, they can spend it instead on having journalists they want at the event and they can host it and they have engineers there and they can do a whole meet and greet. They see like it's much better for them. So, yeah, it's uh, it's going to be something that I think they're going to do moving forward. Uh, GMC did it last year for the Sierra and they really liked it. Chevy Silverado did it at the did not do it. They did Nias as well, the Toyota show, and they had they had crap coverage. They got destroyed in the coverage. So, so yeah, I think it's going to be interesting to see um, whether they're going to do it or not. And I think they're going to keep doing it offsite. I think it's just what they're going to do. Auto shows are so weird these days. They're just 
it's not the same it used to be. It's not a captive audience. It's not as much as it used to be PR wise. They're doing stuff offsite. They're even doing some freaking YouTube reveals these days too. The auto industry is just weird right now. The traditional uh, auto journalist stuff is changing and morphing because the customers are changing. All right. Uh, I think it'd be a great live stream. I agree, Doug. I think it'd be an awesome live stream. Uh, I, sp uh, I should look him up. Tokyo Drew. Uh, better than a certain fellow colleague in Morocco. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Um, Tokyo Drew is a cool channel, man. Yeah, it costs more for money to bring people into this together offsite than a capture audience and audio show. Yeah, I, it may cost more money, but they get better media out of it, I think. It's a, it's a pro and con. I've been talking to guys about it a little bit and uh, the PR reps. It's, it's a pro and con. So you spend a little more, more money than you would, but you get more of a captive audience. More people want to be there. Instead of being like the British journalists are covering this, but a British channel about a product they'll never get. That's, that happens in, in NIAS all the time. Uh, hey, guys, I'll come in peace. <laughs> Dan, Dan comes to peace. My Wi-Fi just crashed. Oh, my goodness, Dan, Brandon. Wi-Fi just crashing. That's Barbara. Hey, Brandon, we'll see you in a little bit when your Wi-Fi comes back up. No kidding. Uh it's back now. Brandon, because Eddie quit the internet company. <laughs> so, some of them, have you guessed what vehicle I just test drove? Ooh, ooh, Dan, you test drove a vehicle. Come on, details. You and I have been talking about different vehicles and um, on the live streams. I'm curious now. Very curious. Very curious. Um, Patriarch Whiskey. Somebody needs to email these guys. Sponsorship. <laughs> is it because if they fall short in a certain area they don't want that out there because of competition no it's because if a competitor has a vehicle that just wows the media it takes all our attention so in Detroit last year was a Ranger um, was a Ranger F-150 2019 F-150 Raptor, maybe something like that. Uh, Chevy Silverado and Ram 1500. Ram destroyed all that coverage. Ram took the show. They won the show. And so all the other vehicles did not get the same play in the media because Ram destroyed the uh, – uh, Ram caught everybody's attention. So there you go. Oh, I forgot the guy's again. Welcome back, Brandon. I was so lonely without you, but now you're back. <laughs> You won't be annoyed by the salespeople trying to get in to, to, to buy a new vehicle. Oh, they don't annoy me. Again, Elliot, I don't know what they're saying. <laughs> so, uh, I, Wong, Chung, Wong, Chung, I don't know what they're saying. I don't know. It, I have to find, I'm going to see if I can find a dealership, A. If I can find a dealership and I can walk around, we'll see. Is a Tokyo dealership the same as an American dealership? I have no idea. None, but I have multiple days built in of um, extra time, and I have some friends over there that I'm going to kind of hook up with, and I'm going to see if I can't just walk around dealership. I don't know. I, do dealerships look the same? Same experience? Do you walk around? Does a sleazy, like, like leisure suit guy come out and meet you in the parking lot, smoking a cigarette, talking to you about how he can get you a good deal in a used car? I don't know. I don't. I don't know. Uh, but I'm infinitely curious. I don't, if I go and again, knock on wood, I think everything's working out. When I go, it's gonna be so fun. It's gonna be so fun with you guys. You guys have no idea. Uh, <laughs> the videos don't come up. Well, Tim, I'm building what vehicles I test drove this Wednesday, so you have to find out then. Ooh. So Dan, are you doing? I should check this out. Uh, let's look at Dan the Mopar man. Uh, put user in timeout. No, I don't want to do that. Hi users. No, no, no. Report. No. Dan, do you have a? Ch are you doing a channel? Oh, you have a truck trend image on your thing. I can't see if you have a channel or not. Can you post your channel, Dan? Dan needs an adult beverage. He's not going to hear me at all. He's going to leave, come back, be like, "Whoa, what's up? I got my Budweiser. What's going on?" Just turn on and yell, guys. <laughs> 
<laughs> hey, say Navy Aviator now. Say Navy Aviator. <laughs> Might mean the death of an auto show. Yeah. Yeah, auto shows are changing. Uh, some dude on the History Channel just said Navy Aviator. All smashed together in the fond little areas. <laughs> we may witness your arrest. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's very possible. I have no idea what's going to happen over there. I have no idea. I don't know. I, I You know, I, I'm concerned if I land in Tokyo, because I think I'm going to land in Tokyo. I think you'll land in Tokyo and take a train, a high-speed train to Toyota City. And uh, I'm very nervous about landing and finding my way to this train. I hope somebody's there to, like, hold my hand. Like, literally, <laughs> like, let's go this way. <laughs> uh, that really much makes me concerned. Um, uh, yeah, uh, uh, not so fast. There will always be certain auto shows that were used for major debuts. Geneva, Paris, Frankfurt, Los Angeles, New York. Yeah. Okay, you guys, I'm back. I had to grab some hard cider good beverage to have this time of year. Oh, very really tasty. And Beijing and Shanghai. I can't use Google Translate if I'm using my phone to live stream. But I can use Google Translate, I think. I promise Google won't screw you over. <laughs> Are you a sen senator now? Oh, I can't go politics. I can't go politics. But it did really crack me up the senators going, talking to Google, like, how come my phone says this? And he's like, we don't make your phone. <laughs> it's a different company. Uh, senators trying to understand the internet. You need a luggage assistant, Tim. Yeah, I do. I do, Sean. I need somebody. Yeah. Oh, is that Dan Mopar Man's channel? All right, cool. Thanks, Dan. Solder home. Solder home. That's how you say it. Solder home. So, wait. Open. Dan has 38 subscribers. Dan, what? Oh. Dan has photos of himself on his channel. Look at that. Dan's got a nice beard going. I can hear. I'm bored, guys, so let's go drive some vehicles. Oh, good thing to have. He likes the Helifont. Oh, yes, he should like that. Do you like this? Look at your channel. Uh, all train guy. Bright side. Is he subscribed to me? Let's look. Uh, no, not so far. Not so. Wait a minute. It says you're not subscribed to my channel, Dan Mopar Man. What's going up? That Kagi Films, really, really, you like this Kagi Film? What this Kagi Films? Dude, that guy's got five hundred thousand subscribers. Holy crap! Brit has one subscriber. You like him more than you like me? Roman Atwood Barely Vlogs has fifteen million subscribers. Holy cow! I'm like working on 1,500. 21 million subscribers to the bright side. That's crazy. All train guy. Saved playlist. Cartoons? It says cartoons is on saved playlist. Dan. Dan Mopar Man. Dan, I'm going to subscribe to your channel. I think I subscribed. All right. What the hell? Later, Dan. Uh, uh, later, Brandon. Uh, you got grab your old phone. Use your transact. I turned that some bitch in. Uh, yeah, Tim, you're way behind. Sounds like. What am I way behind? I'm on Dan the Mopar Man's channel. Blow some shit up. <laughs> <laughs> Solid advice. Could be worse. You could be the tall guy. Car reviews getting busted for street racing in Arizona. Wait, what? Tall guy car reviews. Fine, fine, fine. You got tall guy. Tall guy car reviews. Arrested. I see it. The police arrested me and my brother. Tall guy car reviews. Huh. Wow. He got a rep. I need to get arrested, apparently. He's got 400,000 subscribers. I need to get arrested. I've never met this guy. It's so it's so weird on YouTube. There's this whole, like, 
subculture of like car view guys that I've never met. I've never seen. No idea who these guys are. No idea. Uh, let's say we can't talk about politics, but I can't. <laughs> no, I don't. I, I just saw it, Randy. That's hilarious. Um, I don't want to talk about politics. I want to make this because this live stream becomes all politics and the show becomes live politics. I don't want to talk about it. There's like three YouTube guys bust for street racing because they post on you on the tube. I understand that. Next pitch vehicle, take it to a demolition derby or shoot it with your. <laughs> uh, I'm not doing that. I'm out of one getting late here. Late and later, Sean. Sorry, keeping you awake late, Sean. Later. He's in Minnesota. I met him. Really? I bet you get more followers. I bet I would too. I think I would too. We well, cancel the bag now, Tim. Sees what I like now. Like I'm going to have to shave my beard off and shave my hair and go into hiding. <laughs> <laughs> jump the shark lmao yeah i don't uh i don't know i uh i seem to do a video on driving swede my 62 because you don't see very many driving videos of old trucks like that although i had a really good response to the uh corn harvest video i did over the weekend i put it on a saturday afternoon and uh, i wasn't gonna do it saturday afternoon i was gonna do it monday morning at 8 a.m all kind of crap crap but i was sitting here kind of bored um, and I was kind of tired, so I thought I'll just put it out. So I uh, put it out and uh, got some good responses. I'm really happy with the response I got. Not a lot. I'm a niche channel. I get that. I'll grow. But yeah, Tim, I subscribe to your channel. How else am I going to load when you have live stream? You silly person. Well played. Well played. Hmm. Almost bottom glass. That means live stream's about done. LOL, the fawns. <laughs> I, yeah, I don't. Uh, sorry, that's really bugging me. Played golf today, too. It really hurt trying to grip the club. Um, anyways, uh, yeah, so I will uh, I will have some fun stuff coming up. Fun stuff. Fun stuff. What image is that? Is that it's a RAM image in Danimo Park, man? I'm going to watch this video. It's a one minute, 45 minute video on uh, test driving for vehicles. Oh, you're all portrait. You need to turn the camera, man. Not like this. This. Nice hit. Okay, Tim, thank you for the sub, and I'll subscribe to your channel. I've been subbed to your channel for porns. All right, fine, fine. It doesn't say, it doesn't show up in your channels. I looked at your channel. It doesn't say. See, I watch a various amount of videos where I military cartoon, whatever, whatever I like. <laughs> you have interesting tastes. You have interesting tastes. All right. I think that's it. 52 minutes. I think that's a long enough time with a journalist. Um, we talked about nothing but uh, BS tonight. So uh, next week is Christmas. Sorry. Won't be here for Christmas. Uh, I'll be here the following week. And then we get in January. And this is automotive law right now. So I'm, gonna, I'm sorry, guys, but here's what's going to happen. Is that after Christmas, we're in automotive lull until Detroit. So I have a couple live streams. Ain't going to be much going on. Sorry. I got some reviews. I'm going to put out new videos. Put out some stuff at the, cask, uh, the um, Tahoe, Yukon, and Escal Escalade. They're being spy shotted right now. And that's going to be it. It's gonna be it's gonna be what's going on. That's what this time of year is. And then we get really rolling. Yeah, really going. To get more followers, you need to do crazy stuff. Check into whistle diesel. Whistle diesel. I I'm uh I'm thinking that next month will be I'll get it quite a bit from Japan, from Detroit, from Chicago. Um, I'm thinking right now I'm just gonna glide in with the new year what I got and then get the February and then see what happens, see what fall it is. I don't know that I really want to do crazy stuff to get subscribers because then every time you do it you have to do something crazier to keep going you can't go down this this pit hole where you just keep going that direction and i'm not interested not interested uh do videos of whiskey drinking like the fireplace videos <laughs> yeah i should i absolutely should so anyways i'm gonna call it good um i will see you guys next in two weeks in two weeks because christmas and have merry christmas everybody and happy new year and I'll see you in two weeks. And then we'll do some filler live streams where we wait for the news. Wait for the news. All right. Later, guys. Have a good night. And Merry Christmas.